Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today we're going to be discussing thyroid cancer symptoms. And we're going to be talking about early warning signs that you may have thyroid cancer, what to do about those, and how it will present, and so on. So let's jump right in here. Um, first, I want to talk about uh, just some basics about thyroid cancer. So let's just let's just assume that um, worst case scenario you do have thyroid cancer. But by the way, you probably don't um, because we'll we'll talk about why and why it's confusing. But but even if you do, worst case scenario, the most common form of thyroid cancer is also the least aggressive form, and that's called papillary thyroid carcinoma, and it has a five year survival rate of about 97.8%. So that's really good news for all cancer. So even though thyroid cancer is relatively common um, compared to, well, it's not common compared to other cancers, but of the hormone and endocrine related cancers, it is the most common, but it also has one of the best pro uh, prognosis out of all of these cancers. So right off the bat, that's a good thing that you should know, um, and you can read a little bit more about that. So let's talk about the symptoms associated with thyroid cancer. And I wanna do that by talking about the neck. Okay, and so the, the, this will make sense once I get into it, but generally you need to know some basics about cancer, how it presents, and so on and so forth. So um, cancer arises from different tissues and, and different organs uh, inside of your body. Now, the earlier we catch cancer, the better your prognosis is. And that means that if your cancer is in a place where we can catch it early, that's a really good sign. And so think about your neck. And I want you to, you can use this picture to sort of help you understand it. There isn't a lot of space between your skin and your thyroid gland. Okay, because you can see here from this image that your thyroid gland sits in front of and kind of next to your trachea, which is your windpipe. And if you just touch your neck right now, I guarantee you can feel it. It's very hard. It's kind of, it has some ridges on it. You can, you can feel that, which means you can also feel your, feel your, your thyroid. So if there's any abnormality within your thyroid gland, such as a nodule or such as cancer, you might actually be able to touch it and to fill it, and that's called palpating it. And so that's a really good thing because um, if it were in your, let's just say your thyroid was in your stomach, it's hard to feel around it, you know, feel through your intestines and things like that, which is why a lot of pancreatic cancers don't present until way later on um, when they're really advanced, and that's when they're really hard to treat. And so because of where your thyroid is located, it's generally pretty easy to, to look at through uh, ultrasound imaging. It's also really easy to feel and to palpate and so we can find abnormalities pretty quickly so let's talk about some of those those symptoms that might arise and it may surprise you to know that most people with thyroid cancer don't have any symptoms at all okay most of the time it's found incidentally through routine exam meaning you go into your doctor's office your doctor is feeling around in your neck just as part of a normal exam and he may feel a lump or a bump and he, said, he or she says, uh, we should take a look at this. So you get a thyroid ultrasound and it comes back and you have a nodule. Okay, so that's generally how it starts. And then you get a biopsy depending on the size and if it's growing. And that's usually how thyroid cancer uh, is diagnosed. And so you don't actually have symptoms. Now what can be confusing, and we'll talk about this in just a little bit, is that some other thyroid conditions um, can present with thyroid-like symptoms, and you may feel a nodule and know that you have symptoms such as fatigue or, or other type of symptoms like that, and you may think that you have thyroid cancer as a result. That's not how thyroid cancer um, uh, functions and, and operates. In fact, most people who have thyroid cancer don't have any issues with thyroid hormone. Now, you would think that if there was a problem within the gland, that it would cause problems with the hormone that the gland produces. It generally does not work that way in the vast majority of the cases. In fact, most of the time, the the problems come from the size of the cancer and it pushing on other things around your neck. And so I want to show you this illustration to kind of help you understand. So let's imagine this scenario. You may have two bumps, you know, one's a, one's a nodule, one's thyroid cancer. And you can't really tell the difference unless you get a biopsy and you look at the tissue. Okay, and so that's why doctors are really intense about looking at thyroid nodules and about ordering repeat ultrasounds and getting biopsies and so on and so forth. But from the outside, you can't really tell. But let's let's assume that, you know, this, this looks like a nodule here and this looks like thyroid cancer here. Um, and we know that. Now, it depends. Now, if this was big enough, so let's say that this this little tiny, and this is about the size of a lot of cancers, by the way. They're not really big in the thyroid because we catch them early. So if you had thyroid cancer here and it was sufficiently large, it might start to press as it grows onto things around your thyroid. So it could be pressing on your or your trachea. If it was behind, it could potentially be posing, um, uh, pressing on your esophagus. It could be, you know, potentially crush that your 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 windpipe enough that it would cause changes to your voice. That's the kind of symptoms that you might have. And I'll go through a list in just a minute. But I wanted to show you what it looks like and why most people don't have symptoms. And the reason is simple. It has to do with the anatomy and it has to do with how it functions. So let's talk about some of the symptoms you might have if you do have thyroid cancer 
and only if it's a it's a sufficiently large, meaning it's it's a pretty big cancer. Because like I said, most of the time you don't have any symptoms. So number one could be compression of the esophagus or the trachea. Like I said, it sits right around there. If it's big enough, it could po it could uh, press against those objects because they're right there. You could have difficulty swallowing. You might have swelling or enlargement of the neck. Um, or a bulge in the neck. That's sort of uh, what I was saying before. You might feel those things. You might have changes to your speech, including hoarseness. You could have an enlargement of the lymph nodes in your neck. That that would be a, another uh, sign, but it's, um, it's again, it's found within the neck, but it's not directly related to your thyroid. You could have the symptoms of a thyroid goiter, goiter which just means a very enlarged uh, thyroid gland. You could also have some pain in the neck, although this is pretty rare especially uh, it's common for the, the rarest form of thyroid cancer but for most cancers it's um, it's not common and then lastly you could also have a constant non-productive cough and so what that means is just a dry cough that's just annoying you're not actually bringing up any phlegm or any mucus you're just coughing because you feel like you have something in your throat okay now th those are the symptoms that's pretty much it so what's perhaps more important if you don't have any of those symptoms you probably don't have thyroid cancer but you should still get checked out but there are other conditions which may make you think you have thyroid cancer even though you don't. So number one, thyroid nodules. Remember, these are incredibly common with up to 7% of the world's population having one. Okay, that's so many people, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine, but a lot of people have thyroid nodules. And like I said, they look the same, so you have to go in with an ultrasound and you have to get a biopsy. So remember, don't freak out if you think you feel a bump or anything like that, it's probably a nodule. Number two, a goiter. Goiter just means enlargement of the thyroid gland, and certain things can cause a goiter, such as iodine deficiency and and some other things. We'll, we'll talk. We'll have another video on on goiter in general. Um, but goiter just means an enlargement. It could be an enlargement of the whole gland or a specific area. So technically, thyroid cancer causes goiter because it causes an enlargement. But you know, generally people. Uh, you don't want you don't want to think about it like that because that's not generally how it works. But I'm just being technical for you. Number three, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is just an inflammatory process of the thyroid gland. When your thyroid gland is inflamed, it's going to become enlarged, and it may be painful, usually not with Hashimoto's, but it could be. Um, and so you might you might sense that, or it might feel a little bit puffy in your neck, and that might freak you out. And then lastly, a thyroid cyst. So this is like a nodule. Um, it's hard to tell the difference, but they're, the cyst is filled with fluid, whereas a nodule is generally solid, or at least partially solid. Um, and again, all of these things can be differentiated through ultrasound testing, and also through you know touching base with your doctor and getting some tests so let's talk about it what should you do if you suspect you have thyroid cancer number one complete history and physical exam go into your doctor have him or sh him or her get a full um uh, history what you know have you had exposure to radiation or or anything like that do you have any risk factors for thyroid cancer have have that person feel your neck to see if there's any lumps or anything like that number two get a thyroid function or get all the thyroid function lab tests just to make sure that your thyroid is functioning appropriately and that includes thyroid antibodies so you can test for things like Hashimoto's or other other problems related to your thyroid number three get a thyroid ultrasound this will help you understand what exactly is happening inside of the gland itself it will show you if you have nodules It'll show you what you, what they look like, and depending on what they look like, you can determine your risk for developing cancer. Number four, you can look at iodine testing. That's particularly useful, especially if you think you have a goiter. And number five, I think we're on number five, other blood tests such as inflammatory markers. So remember, I said inflammation of the gland can make the gland painful, and that may be confusing. So if you get these inflammatory markers and they're you know elevated, that might be a sign that something else is going on with your thyroid. So these are just uh, some quick tips that I think you know. And if you go to your doctor they should do these things for you. So again, don't freak out if you think you have some of these symptoms, but this is the, the full set of symptoms that you might expect if you do have thyroid cancer, but only in those advanced cases where the thyroid cancer is sufficiently large that it's compressing and poking on other things um, inside of your neck. So there you have it. If you have any questions at all, please leave them below. Otherwise, I hope you guys found this helpful.